the telegraph pole, wires, and insulators, and the key inside Windsor Castle testified to Brigham Young's eager adoption of the latest communication technology. In the mid-19th century, the telegraph was a new communication system that changed the relationship of distance and time. Civil War armies strung wires to the front. General Grant could have instant communication with President Lincoln. A transcontinental telegraph paralleled the transcontinental railroad, but was finished first. In 1865, news of Lincoln's assassination was received by telegraph in California. Could this technology serve the extended frontier communities of Mormons? Brigham Young was always interested in, in doing anything that could bring more union and cohesiveness to his far-flung kingdom. One of the uh, laborious practices that the church had was to, to send out general authorities, often in groups, uh, church trains, so to speak, traveling through the Mormon communities holding conferences where uh, the First Presidency and some of the Twelve would show up in your village and, and give you instructions and, and try to get uh, people on the same page. Uh, clearly having telegraph opportunities where word could be sent quickly and unity and messages and instructions uh, could come to the people were important. Young was concerned with unity and cohesion among the faithful and he was ever mindful of the community's vulnerability. It's interesting that the same month that the uh, Black Hawk War started in April of 1865 was when Brigham Young's plans to get the uh, Deseret Telegraph line up and running took place. And it took place before he had any inkling that there was going to be Indian trouble. He knew there would always be friction during that time between Mormons and, and the Native Americans whose lands they were settling on. Uh, but there were other reasons too, economic reasons, religious reasons, governmental reasons to get word out to the settlements as quickly as possible. Also, the defensive abilities that a line would have, not just with Indians, but should the United States government send uh, troops again, threatening military action, that this would be helpful. After the Civil War, Brigham Young was able to buy telegraph supplies as army surplus. The Deseret Telegraph, like the ranch at Pipe Spring, was a Mormon church-sponsored business. To build and operate the telegraph, church members contributed labor, just as they helped build and maintain roads. Luella Stewart, was only 17 years old when she became the first telegraph operator at Pipe Spring. At least seven other women operated the telegraph there. The women learned Morse code, of course, but the messages they sent were sometimes written in yet another code. They would send a message saying, uh, send three chairs to such and such, and that would be the signal that at three o'clock there was a marshal coming to town. In the 1880s and early 1890s, when anti-polygamy prosecution was strongest, messages about the travels of the federal marshals could have life and death importance for the people who practiced polygamy. There was a murder that took place in Perowin uh, by the marshals shooting a polygamist as he took his animals through town. So there was a sense of fear. The Deseret system was available to non-Mormons. John Wesley Powell's survey team used the link between Salt Lake and Kanab to make simultaneous sextant readings in the two places and establish Kanab's exact coordinates. In later years, non-Mormon mining companies made use of the telegraph for business-related communications. The Deseret Telegraph began as a church-run enterprise, serving church communication needs. But later, the Deseret Telegraph, like the Pipe Spring Ranch, was sold. In 1900, the Deseret Telegraph became part of Western Union. By that time, the newest communication system, the telephone, was already in service at Pipe Spring. <laughs>